Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here. In this update, we're gonna be taking a look at the short range as well as the longer range. But let's start off with the satellite view and take a look at three areas of concern this afternoon for severe weather. The first one is gonna be highlighted across the Rockies. There are gonna be showers and thunderstorms blowing up across portions of Denver. Even some big time hell producers for that region. There's also a secondary complex that's blowing up across portions of Kentucky, as well as into Tennessee with more big time hell producers. And there's a third pocket of energy kind of blowing up across portions of Michigan near the Detroit region. They've already actually seen some larger hail within that region, and those will be diving southeast and eventually heading into Ohio, getting into Pennsylvania later on this afternoon with an additional hail threat for that region. So going forward, here are your lift mechanisms. You can actually see it on the vorticity map. The first one is out here towards the Rockies, very subtle, but it's right here in Wyoming, just to the south of there. That's where you have the lift and that's where the atmosphere is overturning. And further off into the east, there's that other secondary piece of energy across portions of Kentucky, as well as into Tennessee. And then you've got that third piece of energy up here in and around the Great Lakes region towards Michigan. That's gonna be the situation that's already producing some big time hell producers but continuing into the afternoon, into the early evening time frame, getting into that Ohio region as well as into Pennsylvania. So if we take a look at the 850 millibar, this is about 5,000 feet aloft. So you can actually see depicting where the actual heat dome is, and that is further south highlighted in this red shaded area. But further north, you can see these colors kind of changing. That's some colder air aloft. So as storms start to rise up in that atmosphere, that's the culprit with that lip mechanism that's gonna be producing with that colder air aloft, able to produce some of those big time hell producers and a damaging wind threat as well. Not really a tornadic setup, but definitely big time hell producers and stronger wind gusts within these regions. And going into the afternoon time frame, the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted those three areas of concern. The first one is right here towards the Rockies, essentially east of the Denver region. They are getting going in Denver right now, and they're gonna be continue to shift off east southeastward, heading into the Kansas region, getting into the Dodge, Dodge, uh, Dodge City region, heading into the Tulsa area, into the later afternoon, into the evening time frame, And there's that secondary complex across portions of Nashville, getting into Baduca again, back into Knox Knoxville, and that enters as far south as into the Atlanta region. And then they have yet a secondary and enhanced risk for severe storms for big time hell producers and some damaging winds across portions of Michigan, getting into the Ohio region, as well as entering portions of Pittsburgh later on this afternoon into the evening time frame. So if you look at the hail index, it's fairly common to see big time hail producers around this region, especially near the Denver region and east of Denver. Not out of the question, you could see some definitely some two inch hailstones or greater and with some of those areas have already seen that, but it's fairly rare to actually see this hatched risk up here across portions of Flint, Michigan, in and around the Detroit region, getting into Cleveland, those areas in Pittsburgh. That's fairly rare to see a hatched risk within these zones, and they're actually already had some big time hell producers. In fact, let's look at the helicity index. So this is where the updrafts are gonna be, and this is really where they're highlighting that enhanced risk for severe storms. So it's exactly where you have that colder pull aloft, and it's exactly where you got the, the most increased lift up in the atmosphere and going to be the area is going to be rotating a little bit but definitely some big time hell producers within this region so if we zoom in at the surface map there's actually those three separate severe thunderstorm watches already in place and you can see what based on the storm reports we've already seen some areas that's 1.75 that's some golf ball size hail there's actually a pocket of energy up here that produced some tennis ball size hail just north of cheyenne but those storms are getting their act together, traversing eastbound. There's that secondary piece of energy across portions of Nashville. Those have some 60 to 70 mile per hour winds associated with them. That's continued to dive east to southeastward. And then further to the north, yeah, look at these areas producing some 
some one inch hail, some isolated areas of golf ball. And there's actually an even isolated report of two and a half inch hail. If we actually zoom into this region towards the South Bend, Indiana region, there's areas that produce numerous golf ball size hail reports just within the last 24 hours. And then further to the north up here in Flint, Michigan, I don't know, see if you can actually see this or not, but that's two and a half inches, folks. That's fairly rare for the state of Michigan to see that big a size hail. That's the, that's the atmosphere that we're dealing with this afternoon for these northern regions across getting into Detroit. And that will continue into the Cleveland region, getting into Pittsburgh later on this evening. So definitely be on high alert as that severe, severe weather watch will be extended further southeast into the evening time frame. But heading into tomorrow, it's all about the high pressure, folks. So as the high pressure kind of sneaks off, backs further off to the west, it allows that trough that's underneath this area across the upper Midwest to sink just a tad bit further south. So you actually see this kind of the weakness in the ridge across these regions of Arkansas into northern portions of Mississippi and Alabama getting into Georgia. And that's exactly where you see the storm development. So it's a tad bit further south than where it is today, but continuing the Northwest flow aloft with the high pressure dominating out West, you've got the weakness of the ridge out East. And that's exactly where the storms are gonna be elongating around along this region, originating in the Little Rock region, headed into Memphis, back into Birmingham, getting into Huntsville, back into Montgomery portions of Atlanta region, heading into Charleston, into Jacksonville, those will be the most susceptible regions to be in seeing some of those larger hail producers and some damaging winds on your Friday afternoon. And going into Saturday again, as the little weaker cool front for this time of year drifts a little bit further south, it kind of loses its luster and loses its steam and loses any colder air, the colder air that's associated with it. But nonetheless, the atmosphere is still gonna be able to overturn itself and produce some showers and thunderstorms into Saturday afternoon across these regions into the Shreveport region, back into Jackson, getting into Mobile, and that shifts as far south as portions of the Florida Panhandle heading into Saturday. But if you sum it all up over the next three days, this is exactly where the rain showers and storms are gonna be and the heavier pockets of rain. So we still got some areas have a moderate risk for excessive rainfall. And that's really depicted in these yellow shaded areas. Some of these areas, five to seven inches of rain just in the next six to 12 hours within these regions. And you can see the movement of these storms. They are going to be shifting off east southeast bound. But further north, yes, along these areas into the Great Lakes, heading into upstate New York, getting into Pennsylvania, heading into Ohio region, back into West Virginia, you are going to be able to see some of those heavier rains and some of those could produce some isolated flash flooding rains up into up into that region. But Heading into next week. So it's gonna be all about this really dominating ridge of high pressure. So the culprit is out west where that ridge is really gonna be starting to take shape and unfold as it swings back further off into the east. It's this time it's going to expand and lift actually further north. So any coolness in this trough that's left eventually is gonna be eaten away by this dominating ridge that's going to be infiltrating these these this colder pocket aloft of any any sort of energy that's left up in the atmosphere it's going to eat away and dry out the atmosphere in a big way and, and leave, leave it with a lot of sinking air by the end of the week because if we look at the 850 millibars 850 850 millibar temperatures now up at 5,000 feet now the difference is it's dry at the surface, but also dry up in the upper levels. So what that means to you is even the storm development will be shut off next week because of the dominating ridge that's going to be taking over for a good part of the country. And it's going to be shifting in areas that has not really seen the intense heat as of this so far this summer. And they're going to start getting into the action with the well above average temperature anomalies, the only, <laughs> the only cooler temperatures, and they're very, not even actually that cool, 
is going to be far extreme portions of the Pacific Northwest up here towards, you know, British Columbia region, those could see somewhat maybe slightly cooler anomalies. But for the rest of the country, pretty much the entire lower 48 is going to be locked under a dominating ridge of high pressure with a ton of sinking air and not much rain to associate it with it, right? So not much at the surface and not much in the upper levels. That dries out the atmosphere, folks, with a dominating ridge of high pressure, pulls in that sinking air. This is your precipitation on Wednesday over a 24 hour time span. And it's almost next to nothing, right? It's gonna be hard pressed to squeeze out any precipitation, even really in the United States next week by the middle of next week because man the bridge comes back with a vengeance so not only does it lift north up towards alaska it's going to lift north towards the central u.s and even into the northern plains getting into the upper uh, upper midwest and heading eastbound too so kind of very rare to see pretty much the almost the entire lower 48 up, up you know under above average other temperatures and this actually comes at the hottest time of the year. These are when you see your hottest averages on average for the US. So you know it's gonna be hot when you're already expecting the hottest time of the year. And then you see well above average temperatures on top of that, you know there's gonna be a lot of heat uh, to be dealt with under that region. And there ain't gonna be much precipitation to be falling out of the sky as well. And where that ridge is the most dominant, is where you're going to have the most sinking air and very dry conditions any little weakness and you have to go pretty far north up here in probably northern dakota up in northern portions of minnesota and northern portions of the up of michigan to squeeze out even slightly chances of above average precipitation and heading in towards the end of the month the ridge is the real deal, folks. Not only are the desert southwest still baking, Phoenix has already eclipsed their all-time extended, you know, 110 plus record, 21 days in a row now. You're likely gonna go all month long of the entire month of July, not getting below 110 in the afternoon. I mean, you're going into rare, that not seen before territory, but now the rest of the country is gonna be sharing in that heat. So. Very rare to see excessive heat, you know, areas for across a good part of the country, not only just the desert southwest, the southern plains and the northern plains, getting into the upper Midwest now and even heading into the mid-Atlantic regions and looking at the extended range, folks, if we look at the European ensembles for that last week of July, heading into those first couple of days of August, that's a lot of heat, folks. Again, the ridge, once it comes in next week and once it locks over the central US, it doesn't seem to go anywhere anytime soon. And if you take it a step further, looking at the precipitation, obviously under that ridge, the stronger the ridge, the less likely it's gonna rain underneath that. And the more the areas it covers, the more areas are, are not going to see much more storm development or even rain opportunities under that ridge. And if we look at the longer range, folks, this is the European weeklies that literally just came out today. And if we look at the extended range and our first look at the month of August, kind of scary, folks. I mean, obviously, August is already a hot month, right? But when you're seeing ensemble guidance just so strong and so so many areas above average, it's really hard pressed to even see any areas even normal or even somewhat slightly lower. There's a lot of heat, folks. So moral of the story is the heat really doesn't go anywhere anytime soon as many records will fall over the next week or two. And you can promise more records will fall in the month of August because of the, the ensemble members look like this for this long out. That just goes to show you this heat is just gonna be locked in and that's not gonna go anywhere anytime soon as we're literally locked into the dog days of summer and uh, you're gonna really feel the heat, folks. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do share this video, definitely hit the like button as well as subscribe to my channel and catch the next update. Fire protect you for and after storm.